nicely come together. I have to admit before we begin that um, this is, I don't know about you, but this is kind of wearing on me. I uh, felt a little stir crazy today. Uh, so I was grateful to God for a beautiful sunny day, got out for a nice run. Um, and I hope that somewhere in the midst of this you can do something that puts back for you. Um, that ultimately um, God's got this. Uh, as I've been praying about the readings for Sunday, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of messages of hope of, of God calling us back into new life, breathing life into unexpected places. This Sunday we hear about um, Ezekiel and the Valley of Dry Bones. We hear about Lazarus and Jesus calling him forth from the tomb. Uh, there are lots of ways in which we're called into new life uh, in this Lenten season as it all points toward the resurrection, how God breathes that into us, how Jesus can speak the word into our hearts and cause new life to shine through our faith. So uh, I hope that's a message of comfort as we prepare for Sunday, as we come together for noonday prayer. Let's take a breath. And another breath. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If anyone is a new is if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. I wonder if we could try something a little different today. I wonder if we could take a quiet moment and think about the ways in which we are finding new life in this, ways perhaps in which we are finding rest, ways in which we are finding joy, ways in which we are finding peace. How is God, through Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, creating something new in your life? What does that look like for you? to comment, you're more than welcome to. How is
is God creating a new life through Christ? What is breaking in to your world? Sometimes when things are being made new, it's a lot like when our computer changes an operating system or when Facebook changes its templates. Uh, it's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. Anyone who has ever given birth to new life knows that that is actually painful. There's a moment in that process where most folks, I'm told, feel like they're going to die. I know when things are being made new for me, it hasn't always been easy. It hasn't always been joyful. It hasn't always been fun. And yet what I have found in my own life as we think about the new things that God is always doing, is that God's plans are almost always, <laughs> no, who am I kidding? God's plans are always better than my plans. Uh, if I had my way, uh, I wouldn't be doing this, because uh, I would have been doing something else with my life. Uh, and yet I find so much more joy um, having answered God's call. Uh, God's plan for me uh, in this vocation, in this moment, in this time, is calling me into new life in new ways. In this COVID-19 crisis, I have taken great joy in, converse, in conversations I've had with my colleagues. Um, in this time of exile, as we are apart from each other, uh, we have this opportunity to, um, oh, thanks for the feedback on the audio. I'm sorry if that's a little weird. I hope we can figure that out. My um, Boiler might be picking up noise um, from outside. We have a vent just outside the, the house, so sorry about that. But thinking about ways in which we are called together um, in this COVID-19 crisis, we as the church are in a time of planting. We are below the ground, uh, looking forward to break forth whenever it is safe to do that. Uh, when we um, come up into the daylight as the church again, um, all of us connected in our homes, uh, we'll someday be together again in the sanctuary of St. Peter's. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to um, think about how we want to be the church when we come together, how Christ can create in us something new as a community, as the body of Christ. Um, I'm so grateful that in this time um, we're still um, housing the homeless and that we're still uh, trying our best to um, address issues around hunger, um, that we are um, staying connected, our clergy are uh, reaching out and connecting. So uh, grateful for all of those um, ways in which we're going deeper, putting down our roots Sometimes that growth happens downward before it can go upward. Um, so I pray for you that wherever you are in this, that this is a time where we can grow some roots, where we can um, go deeper and pull out what is nourishing, those ways in which Christ is making us new. And as we, in this Lenten season, enter into that time of recognizing Christ's sacrifice on the cross, uh, we also recognize with hope uh, the joy of the resurrection, that breaking forth, that new life uh, that we experience in Christ. So take heart in this time of uh, lying fallow. Uh, I hope we can strengthen through our roots. And as we do that, we uh, take things one day at a time. And we ask for Lord to grant us mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we say together, the first section of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts. Direct and rule us according to your will to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your tender mercy's sake. Almighty Savior, who at noonday called your servant St. Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles, we pray you to illumine the world with the radiance of your glory, that all nations may come and worship you, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us that peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. I now invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, um, either in your hearts or in the comments, if you choose to add those. Uh, send those now. For whom and for what do we pray today? What are we praying for today, friends? for those who have been exposed to COVID-19. We give to God our weariness as we take on our many roles. Absolutely. Educating, cleaning, instructing in Taekwondo. We pray for our nation and our earth. We give our labor to God, and our God gives us rest. Oh, we pray for Mary Beth's mother who's fallen and is at the hospital. We give thanks for the chamber decorating and brightening the neighborhood, for neighbors in long-term rehab. pray for neighbors, for Arlene, we pray for doctors and nurses and teams that keep hospitals clean spaces of healing uh, prepared to do their work in this time of anxiety. We lift up those across the nation who are facing shortages of supplies for the sacrificial love of the vocations of healing. We pray for elders in Florida. We pray for We give thanks to the Loaves and Fishes Pantry in New Haven and for their mission. We give thanks to, um, to D. Green for taking food to Loaves and Fishes today. I'm guessing that happened. We didn't get to check in on that. Uh, but grateful for those places that are continuing in their work of feeding, of <clears throat> joining God and God's reconciling love and filling in the gaps, reminding us that there's enough. 
pray for parents of children of special needs, especially in this time of online learning. The needs are so great. The resources sometimes are just not enough. Pray for all who are adjusting to this time of challenge, seeking to care for children in an unsteady and confusing world. We pray for refugees who don't have the luxury of social distancing, who are herded together in camps or in detention facilities. Pray for all those on the margins. We pray for the discipline and wisdom to do what we can to minimize harm. As we faithfully stay home and do our best to flatten the curve, <clears throat> as we abstain from things like the Eucharist, uh, from gathering together for coffee hour, as we give up all these things for Lent and perhaps for Eastertide, we ask that God might work God's healing and reconciling work in the world through us in our little sacrifices. There are so many things we offer up at this time. As we pray for God to answer our prayers, I pray for you for all who are joining live, all who might watch this later, um, all of us as we're in this together, as we walk this Emmaus road, we might <clears throat> journey on that road together, mourning loss, um, grief, um, in, a, in a time where we don't see new life ahead. But what we know from that Emmaus story is that it is Jesus himself who walks alongside us, who calls us into new life, even in the unexpected places, in those unexpected ways. And it is my prayer um, that Jesus come alongside us and break bread with us uh, in new ways. Just as he met those disciples on that Emmaus road, so as we offer up our prayers, we offer up this one from St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them, wherever they might be. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us and for those for whom we pray, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and especially of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today, tonight, tomorrow, always. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us uh, online today, friends. It's, it's an honor to be with you as we continue to remain connected as we continue to remain church. We'll be sending out our constant contact email um, by tomorrow um, and sharing more information as we have it um, as we stay connected. If you'd like to sign up for that, you can find that info on our website. If you'd like a prayer book at home and uh, still haven't come by to borrow one, this is your last chance as we seek to honor the spirit of staying home, staying safe. We are giving folks an opportunity to come by from 6 to 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, we'll have uh, someone available from our staff 
uh, waiting in the parking lot. So if you pull in um, and uh, ask for a prayer book, we'll, we'll loan one out to you. We look forward to coming back together as a common people, uh, praying with a book of common prayer. But if that would be helpful to you in this time of diaspora, as we're spread all over, um, we, we will offer that tonight from 6 to 7. Uh, so I invite you into that. Uh, and we continue uh, to learn and grow. I hope this new camera thing isn't um, too distracting and uh, grateful for, for all of you um, and for your support of our ministry together. Um, if you're worried about your pledge, remember that you can put that in the mail um, or do that online. Uh, please don't send cash. Uh, we don't put that in mailboxes. Uh, but it is helpful as we continue to um, honor our call to be the church, uh, to pay our bills, to uh, support um, vital missions, which we are part of. Um, so uh, thank you for your faithful walking with us in this time. Um, and uh, keep up the great work. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next time, uh, tomorrow at noon. Uh, looking forward to seeing you then. Take good care. God bless you. Bye.